Another big week of FT Live. This is some of the best stuff you'll see from the week. Kratzy, your favorite was? Ross Stripling talking about throwing at Giancarlo Stanton. Not smart, or maybe he was smart because he survived. What about you, Jonesy? Uh, getting to talk to Josh Priest. Uh, the kid is sharp. He goes to La Jolla Country Day, a, kid, a school that my kids uh, are bound to go to. So uh, I know that they're in good hands. I enjoyed talking to Tony Kemp and how much he just is there for the community, a place he's never been, Hawaii, donating his yeah. stuff to help out with the, the horrible wildfires out there in Maui. So good for you, Tony Kemp. And uh, I think, Scott, we talked about the Yankees a little bit. That also was kind of fun. Yeah, we did talk about the Yankees. We had a number of, of guests covering the minor league system and what's going on down there. I'll let you watch and decide for yourself what you think's going down. Here's all you need to know. In 2020, before COVID, hit spring training, we played a game called pitchers versus hitters. The only way to score a point was to walk or hit a ball 95 miles an hour plus. Um, and there's no baseball being taught there anymore. No base running, moving runners, fundamentals, etc. Right before the trade deadline, head of player development comes in the town because none of us are doing any of the stuff. Uh, I won't say names, but you can look up who it is. And we just get reamed out, like reamed out. You guys, you guys think you're so good. You can't do this, you can't do that. We're about to have the trade deadline now. Nobody's, uh, no one's calling for anyone on this team. Meanwhile, and then he starts calling calling out guys. He is exactly, he's spot on. I don't know about the games that they were playing, but he's spot on. And that's kind of what I was alluding to with Davey is I don't think Matt Blake killed him. I don't think Matt Blake hurt his chances. It was the guys that they put with him at the alt site, pitch, like pitching coaches that didn't know what it was like to pitch in the big leagues. I think they do an incredible job and have for each of the last two years at developing the kind of hitters that have success at the major league level, right? They're incredible at some of the underlying stats that I understand people just kind of dismiss, but if you talk to the better teams in baseball organizationally at developing hitting, they're looking at those three stats that I gave you. Chase rate is really important. They're creating hard hit balls at the proper angles and they're doing it with good swing decisions. That is the template and the blueprint for a major league hitter. And that's why I say you can't blame players for, you know, being strikeout guys <clears throat> or worrying about exit velo because if that's how you're evaluating, that's exactly, if you're a smart player, you're gonna do what's gonna get you to the big leagues. You can't hide from this because it will be there. Ask Jose Bautista. Ask Rignan Odor, ask Michael Barrett. I mean, I'm here. Ask all these guys, right? Ask Robin Ventura and Nolan Ryan. For the rest of your life, you're going to see the picture. You're going to see the video. And you better just, you're better off to embrace it than hide from it. Greenies, by the way, they'll make you a little more, a little more jumpy, a little more alert, a little more anxious to jump out of the dugout and back up the boys. Yeah, because, but what you're talking about is like it building up. With greenies and steroids, it wasn't building up. Like it was like, what? First time you said something? No, nope, that's it. And then they're just going at whoa, it. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. What? Oh, you didn't have either one when you played. I was in the middle of that shit. Yeah, right. When did they, when did they start testing for steroids? 2004. You think I didn't play in the minor leagues when there were steroids? Arguably the um, scariest man in the world charged me on the mound by the name of John Carlos Stanton. Uh, this is 2017. Um, we are the, the Dodgers playing the Marlins, and the the close we're, we, we're just killing the Marlins in a four game set. We just smoked them. This is the last game of a four game set, and we're killing them again. And they have to bring in their closer to get some work in in a in a blowout game. And he gives up a grand slam, and the next hitter he hits Brett Eibner. If you guys remember Brett Eibner. Yeah. And then he punches me out and the inning's over and I'm walking back to the dugout and basically get word that we need to respond. And I'm like, okay, well, who's up first? And they're like, well, Giancarlo Stanton is up first. I'm like, okay, <laughs> here we go. Before the pitch even reaches home plate, Chase Utley and Clayton Kershaw are sprinting out the mound. Giancarlo's on the way to me, kind of walking. He's not like sprinting at me or anything, but he's walking on his way to me. Austin Barnes is like holding him back by his cup. He's half the size of Giancarlo Stanton. He's not doing much for me there. And um, he's saying, you don't want to mess with me or, or something like this. And I'm like, I, I kind of agree. Uh, you know, I'm like waiting for, 
Uh, I, I'm waiting for Utley and Kershaw to get out there. And honestly, I think both sides knew it was coming. No one talks about no damn Cape Cod, okay? I hear about it. It sounds like a myth to me. Obviously, I didn't go to college, but it sounds like a mythical land. I don't usually watch the hitter, so I, I don't know. I would have I would have seen the replay or whatever somebody would tell me about it. So I would have been fired up that, you know, the catcher, you know, stood up for me in, in the sense that the, the – you know batter was trying to you know whatever embarrass me or whatever but i don't know i'm kind of on the side that you know if you get me whatever that's fine um and i'm more on this the side of you know you want to strike the guy out i'm not i'm not in the sense of giving up free base runners but you know there comes a time and a place where you know you might have to take matters into your own hands do you think that something should be done or we should be concerned about the state of media as far as what teams put out there when they control so much of the media, it's like you need some believability here and also to remember that it's entertainment. He wasn't even saying like, oh, remember how we tanked for six years and we totally sucked and our owner's <laughs> cheap as hell? Like he literally read a graphic. There's gators all over that campus. Like, actually, I'm used to them, but I mean, people are just walking around and there's there's gators and they're walking near them. And I'm just like, I mean, it could kill you. It's not going to like come out and grab you, but you're getting a little too com comfortable with it. Oh, I will. Too, that's, Imagine that's putting cool. that John on your hat. You can't. Like, you're not putting that on your hat. You're not even putting that on your house. No. Like, I hope Todd doesn't trade pins with me. Oh, we, we won't mention that Kratzy's kicking my ass on Amazon uh, baseball book rankings. But, uh, you know. It's, it's all right. You, ki you kicked my ass on all the prospect articles when I was playing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember mentioning you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. These are real men playing. Get it out there where they get three or four. Ch hey. Go to the monitor, see if it was a ball strike. I want to appeal that one, like they do in the minor leagues. I love that. You I don't, like the I, challenge system. I like the challenge system. I don't want robots. I don't want that. Can we get a couple more days out of, out of paternity leave and we mm -mm. welcome a life into this world? Mm -mm. My kid was born. I played the next day. Uh, I missed the game. <laughs> I don't we didn't have right. Hey, we didn't have paternity leave. You guys are spoiled, man. Yeah, yeah. Is this a thing? I, we we, we talked do this. to all the tenure guys, and I didn't hear about this. So we do this for every birthday, actually. They started it last year. Uh, you know, we celebrate every, everybody's birthday. Uh, we sing happy birthday to them, and then, you know, uh, they get their face smashed in a cake as a uh, little, hey, you made it another year, so let's let's eat some cake. And then, thankfully, we have a cake that we actually get to eat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Put their face on. Yeah, that's, that's really important because you can't just waste cake. I can't tell you how many times I've complained about the music being too loud here. I'm like, I can't <laughs> think out there. I can't even hear the pitch come in my ear when, it, when I'm warming up in the bullpen. I'm like, it's just too loud. What, what's some advice that you give to your 15 year old self that maybe I could, you know, take along with me? Ooh, uh, do more push ups. I always tell <laughs> myself that that's a Scott Braun uh, this recipe. Um, yeah. But just just practice, you know, and, and also take your time off. Take take time off. Dog, don't be afraid to make your bed one time. You're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> the bed in the background. I mean, come nobody makes their bed. Kibby, tell him nobody with ten years makes their bed in the show. Kraft doesn't get it. Tell um, him, dude, you have maid. There's a maid that comes in and does that I'm, for you. Because you guys I'm, are where are you in Baltimore? You guys are in San Diego, right? San so you're, Diego. Yeah, you're either at the Omni or at the Hyatt. I mean, they got lots of maids there, dude. Tell him, Kraft doesn't get it, dude. Ten years in the show, you take the do not disturb off, and they come in and do it for you. Honestly, I'm just hoping I'm hoping that uh, my wife doesn't find this footage. Sorry, I let you guys down on that one. I was focused a lot more on trying to make sure I didn't have the camera going up into my nostrils and really helping. <laughs> and thanks to Kyle Gibson for joining us this week too. And congrats on 10 years. Love bringing the guys on for that. Yeah, plus we learned the origins of the Homer hose in Baltimore and the sprinkler and everything that he has been taught by these young kids, including getting his face smashed into cake for his 10 years. So congratulations, <laughs> Gibby. Oh, what, what do you know about Baltimore and pies getting smashed in the face of players, Adam? Uh, a few things. I think it's a fantastic <laughs> celebration. Congratulations <laughs> to Gibby on 10. I wish I was there to give him a good pie. I've given them to a lot of people. But, uh, nah, it's fantastic to celebrate 10 years. It's a fantastic accomplishment, and congratulations. And, hey, if you like this show and you want to see us on the road, if you happen to be in the Northeast and the Tri-State area, we will be at Somerset on August 24th. It's a Thursday to do the show live, autographs, first pitch with Kratzy. We'll hang out. We'll probably have some merch, all that. So come say hey at the Yanks AA affiliate. And we'll be in Atlantic City at Borgata 
in Jersey, all the way uh, down in South Jersey. If you want to come swing by one to three Eastern on Friday, that is August 25th. Look at me getting my dates right in my head. So thanks for watching the best of FT Live. We do this every single weekday, um, every week, all season long. And if you like what you're seeing on YouTube, we also have the podcast version on Apple and Spotify. Just search Foul Territory. See you next time.